Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. Today's episode is going to be a very short and useful project. It's a shop project and because I don't have an assembly table yet, I needed to make um, high fry condensa, but I needed it to be supported on a flat surface. So I made a pair of I-beams. I haven't seen any videos on YouTube on how to make them and I don't know how many people know of them. But when I saw the article on Pinterest about it, I thought that this might be good information to share. So join me in this episode and I'll walk you through the process of making the I-beams. I'm using a three quarter inch pure bond plywood to build this and it's just one sheet of plywood. The plans call to rip I believe five and three quarters inch strips but I had to adjust a little bit because I made a mistake so the middle piece of the I-beams it's about three and three quarters still a lot of clearance in order to do some clamping so basically this is the letter I or the letter H when you look at the ends of the beam These work well when you set them up on sawhorses and this is great for a shop like this where space is limited and whenever you're done you can just uh, go ahead and store it away. I'm just using glue over here to glue the middle parts to make up uh, about an inch and a half thick material that acts as the middle support of the top and bottom of the beams. I'm just making sure that one edge is flush and I temporarily tack them with some brad nails. I repeat the same process for both of the beams. So this middle part in my design has about three and a half inches. It could be a little bit taller. Then I go ahead back to the table saw and I trim so that the sides are flush. As you can see my dust collection isn't working for such trimming jobs and I think I'm going to redesign another shroud to have just for those particular cuts. After the glue is dried I went ahead and started marking the middle of the center pieces. and I went ahead and uh, drove in some pocket hole screws. The reason I use pocket hole screws is because they're self-drilling or self-tapping, you don't have to pre-drill before and just for the middle part I thought it would be alright even if they stick out a little bit then I went ahead and uh, turned the middle pieces on their edge and started applying glue making sure the glue covers the entire surface
and then I went ahead and started attaching the top and bottom pieces of the beams. Again, I made sure that things are equidistant and uh, I started tacking some brads and then uh, flipped it over and repeated the process. Because the plans called for a taller middle piece, equal in width with the top and bottom of the beams, it is important to remember not to make your middle part narrower because that's what gives the beam strength. I think the thicker the middle part is, the less chance for the beam under considerable amount of duty will warp or bow. I went ahead and uh, used a uh, countersinking bit on my uh, drill and went along the line to make some holes in order to accommodate some drywall screws because I want to be them to be countersunk so I don't end up scratching my work and then that way everything remains level. When you set them up you're supposed to use some shims in order to eliminate if uh, they are not level with each other due to the floor and uh, just some shims and then uh, some clamps will, will do the trick. I hope you enjoyed this episode and next time I will be building the high effect Redenza. It might be a two-part episode depending on how much footage I will gain. Everyone enjoy the rest of your week and I will see you, I'll see you next time.